So the essential matrix, if we remember, is the matrix E that relates the image of a point in one camera to its image in the other camera given a translation and rotation. So E is a 3 by 3 matrix. Uh, here P0 and P1 are corresponding points in normalized image coordinates. And of course E is constructed from the translation and rotation between the cameras. Fundamental matrix is useful um, for this reason. To work with the essential matrix we have to know the intrinsic camera parameter matrix K. And that's because we are working with normalized image coordinates um, where fo effective focal length is 1 and the image center is in the middle of the image. And we use K to find the normalized image coordinates by multiplying K inverse times U, where U is the unnormalized image coordinates. But if we didn't know the intrinsic camera parameter matrix K, all we have is the unnormalized image points, but we can still relate the views using the fundamental matrix F. So to see how that works, let's start with the equation for the essential matrix as given here, and then write what P, the normalized image points, are in terms of the unnormalized image points. So P1 is just K inverse times U1, P0, I take the transpose of the product of K inverse times U0, and that's the, trans the product of the transposes like that. So re substituting those in for the equation above, I get this uh, equation. Or if I identify this, this uh, central product here as the matrix F, that's an equation relating the unnormalized points. So F is the fundamental matrix given by this. So F is defined in terms of unnormalized or pixel coordinates, and it's still useful in terms of reconstructing the epipolar lines. So this is the example I did before, um, creating a synthetic scene of a bunch of points on the faces of a cube. Um, here are the images that it generates and the unnormalized points um, down below here. So we create the um, essential matrix as before from the translation and rotation, and the fundamental matrix now is this product here. So that gives us the true fundamental matrix as shown below. Okay, so we can solve for F given a bunch of point correspondences the same way we solve for E, except we're going to use the corresponding points in terms of unnormalized coordinates. So we have our equation relating u0 and u1. We write that out in terms of the components of f. And we collect the unknowns into a vector uh, called x. Those are all the elements of f. And the knowns are in these rows here of the matrix A. So this is a system of homogeneous equations, and we can solve that using singular value decomposition, as we did earlier. Um, and we'll also do the same steps of um, preconditioning. We'll translate and scale the data points so that they're centered at the origin, and the average distance to the origin is square root of 2. And post-conditioning will, will enforce um, f to have rank 2. So this is this code for computing the fundamental matrix given a set of point correspondences. Um, so this is exactly the same code we had before to read images and display the points. So this part is different. Instead of normalizing the points, we won't normalize the points. Um, this constructs, or this does the scaling and translation as we did before. This computes F as we did before, as we computed E. Um, this part forces F to have rank 2, except we are going to um, not enforce the fact that the um, eigenvalues are equal. And the results of running that um, generated, oops, generated uh, this fundamental matrix. So if we compare that to the ground truth one, we can see that um, it's the same within a scale factor. The scale factor is about uh, 2. 
and we can also verify that um, the epipolar lines are correct by taking uh, a point, for example, in view 2 and generating the line in view 1 and verifying that the corresponding point lies on that line. So with we can do reconstruction, except it's not a metric or Euclidean reconstruction. Um, with the fundamental matrix, uh, we, do, we can do what's called a projective re reconstruction. So in this case, the orthogonal lines or planes in the world may not end up as uh, orthogonal.